Next, my guest is Sam Lieber. He is the CEO of Alpine Mutual Funds. They search the world for real estate investment ideas. One of the challenges faced is determining when housing has bottomed and when does recovery take off. All right, Sam Lieber, let's talk about uh, recovery. In a bigger sense, this has to do more with Brazil. We just got finished talking about multi-plan. Uh, tell me about uh, Tecnisa now. They just did a non-convertible bond deal, mm -hmm. so they're raising money, and this is uh, commercial and residential real estate as well. Yes, although the heavy emphasis is on residential right now. They have one large project, in essence a super block, the largest residential project, new community in essence, um, several thousand homes in, in, in the old Telefonica site, uh, which is in the northwest quadrant of, of um, Sao Paulo. And they have the zoning headaches they've had have been tremendous, much greater than they thought when they won the bidding for the site two years ago. So it's been a long time coming. They are expect to get approvals perhaps this quarter. If that happens, that's a catalyst for the stock. It's currently trading at about six and a half times PE, which is half of roughly where the top companies are trading. And if this project gets approved, uh, and then as they start to uh, ramp up for sales effort, which should happen during the summer, then we could really see the stock perform. So it's basically an undervalued company, I think, with a good pedigree and, uh, and, and uh, with good access to the capital markets. And it should be a very interesting story over the next couple of years. All right. So in Brazil, we've got Multiplan as well as uh, Technisa. Let's go all the way to Asia now. Take me to Indonesia. I know there's a company there you want to talk about. This is Bakri Land. Uh, what is going on in, in Indonesian real estate? Well, Indonesia is interesting. You've got a, a country with 280 million people, uh, but it really is, it, it, it is very much a developing market or emerging, still not even as far as, let's say, Brazil has, which, is, which has really exploded and taken off um, you know, with, with strong consumption patterns. The consumption here is a little more contained, but I think that, um, uh, that the administration of Yerowaino over the past um, uh, four years or so has really improved the um, uh, basic operations of the economy, in essence, the capital markets, confidence in the government, uh, control of the banking system and, and of interest rates. And so there's a lot of stability in there now. Plus, it is, of course, like Brazil, like Norway, and like a lot of countries that we, in, we think are very attractive, they are a producer of significant commodities. So we think that's attractive. But think of one thing. Bakri Land is building a toll road as well as residential housing. Right, they do infrastructure projects as well. Yes, and this, and this particular toll road that they have portions of will be the first road to connect the, the eastern and western ends of Java. So think about a country with the, almost the size of the U.S. that doesn't even have one road connecting the whole country as one superhighway. This is being put in place. They are there. So this country has a long way to go and a lot of opportunity, both on infrastructure and in terms of housing, as they start to open up and expand the middle class. Tell me what's going on with the ownership of Bakri Land, because, I mean, there is a concentrated ownership yeah. position in the Bakri uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, the brothers, uh, explain what goes on there. Well, no, I think Bakri brothers have been, um, uh, 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 took control of, of Bakri Land. Um, back uh, over the past decade. And uh, they used a fair amount of debt. They were classic um, um, LBO players, and they've paid it down. The company's earned its way through and grown, and, uh, and is now one of the largest uh, uh, developers in, uh, in Indonesia, and is very well positioned for a number of projects. But they are using this for, again, the infrastructure and real estate, which makes sense because, of course, as you build out new real estate communities, in, in the suburbs, you need the infrastructure to connect in in many cases. All right, so the concentrated ownership stake doesn't, doesn't concern you there? You're, you're, no. you're not worried about that? No, as long as, as long as they have a pattern of treating shareholders in a positive fashion. Now, once we start to see companies that don't do that, and there are, unfortunately, companies which do, even in the U.S., then, you know, you have to make your decision as what sort of multiple discount do you want to even play, if you do play. And typically, we view it as being, then we'll look at a company like that for a trade, not for a long-term ownership position. So as long as the Bakri brothers treat us fairly and other shareholders fairly, we're in it as long-term investors. And so far, their pattern has been pretty good. All right, let's talk about another company uh, that does have a long-term pattern when it comes to real estate development, and that's here in the United yeah. States. And this is Toll Brothers. Uh, this, they have really managed to weather the the debacle in real estate and indeed uh, looking to add to their holdings. Why do you like Toll Brothers? Well, a seasoned management team, as most of the U.S. home builders have, but most importantly, 
when you look at the macro perspective on housing in the U.S., single-family housing in particular, we have seen a decline of over 80 percent of uh, starts and permits uh, since 05. This has been a long, drawn-out cycle, down cycle. We think we're bottoming now. We think there's going to be a little slow coming up because we don't expect to see wild employment gains, a V-shaped recovery. Uh, you know, we're the school where we're going to see, you know, a, a continuation of this um, uh, a jobless recovery, in essence, that we had for the past couple of cycles. And that said, it's, all is not lost. There's a great opportunity because so many private builders are out of business. The banks don't want to lend to new private builders necessarily. The market share gains that these uh, public guys can get is tremendous. Plus, the fact is that they are operating from a base of a little over 430,000 homes uh, permits on an annual basis now. The peak, uh, you know, was a, was a million eight. The historic average over a course of 50 years, 45 years, pardon me, is. 900,000 homes. Right, we're way below so there. We're way below even the average over a long period of time. So I think there's tremendous opportunity and um, for uh, for uh, seeing these the, the sector double in size very quickly. And when that happens, we'll start to see the profits flow not not significant this year, more meaningful next year, and quite Im impressive, perhaps, in 2012. Sounds like you need a little patience, though. You need patience, but if you've got a horizon of three to five years, you will make multiples on your investment. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Sam Lieber, coming in, the CEO of Alpine Mutual Funds, um, giving us a multiple of information. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.